Greetings to all. It's a beautiful day here at Texas. And in fact, it's an amazing day to talk about container observability and how each and every one of you can become successful in monitoring your container environment using AWS native solutions. My name is Arun Chanda Pillai, and with me today, I have the most amazing Lucy. Lucy, please take it from here. Thank you, Arun, as always. And thanks for everybody joining us today. We're very excited you're being here, and I hope you are as well. My name is Lucy Hartom. I'm the Worldwide Business Development uh, Specialist for AWS Absorbability. In today's session, we're going to cover some of the challenges in monitoring and absorbing container environments for your workloads and applications. And then we're also going to have a quick refresher on what AWS is offering in the container, uh, in the containers, as well as AWS absorbability for containers. Then Arum is going to dive specifically into our latest capabilities in container absorbability and share with you a journey on how Bob are using these technologies to help him monitor and absorb better, resolve issues, and troubleshoot root causes. We also have resources so you can take away at the end, start exploring with AWS container absorbability. With that being said, let's get a start. I hope most of you can relay the feeling of getting that wake up call at the most inconvenient time. Whether it's at 3.30 in the morning or a Friday before you wanna head off for your long way to vacation, outage happens always in these most inconvenient times. And one of the most infamous quote says that everything fails at once and the f outage and failures doesn't care about what time it is. Our goal here today is to equip you with sets of tools so when problem happens that you know where exactly to look for, what to look for, and how to resolve that issue. So ideally, hopefully, you can get back to sleep at 3.35. That is why monitoring and absorbability tool sets are essentially for a company, especially for folks like you who are responsible to picking up that wake up call and to resolve issues. Now we're adding the containers into all these mix. It's a daunting feeling that you are lacking that visibility in the container environments that adding up the additional stress of that wake up call in the most inconvenient time. So this can all get even more hectic. It feels like you are riding a biggest container ship through a snow, uh, through a, a storm in the ocean. And our goal is hopefully to lend you smooth selling with the technologies and capabilities that we have in AWS for your gaining more visibility in the container environment. So let's first take a look at why customers are adopting containers and why are you migrating workloads to containers and building applications on, on containers. There are certainly advantages and we see a, a rapid growth in that area where a lot of customers are using container technologies. Um, a couple of you know uh, straightforward ones are containers are flexible. Um, they're definitely scalable. So it's much easier for um, folks that are building workloads and applications on containers and use as you go. They can right size the workloads. That's also another benefit. With the reasons that why customers are wanting building applications and workload on container, it also brings some of the challenges. And because containers are quickly be deployed or provisioned, it can also quickly be destroyed. And this type of behavior is a primary advantages, but also a struggle to keep tracking changes, and especially in a complex environment with a high turn rate. You can right size the workloads, which means that a lot of times 
the memories and CPUs are shared resources, it becomes difficult to monitor these shared resource consumption on the physical host. And also getting very difficult to have a good indicators on container performance and the application health. And uh, last but not least, you might have some toolings that might give you one piece of the puzzle, but maybe not the entire, um, entire information. So a lot of customers might only get a little bit of information based on the toolings and services they're using, but not be able to really correlating these information and metrics together to get a full picture. So we certainly see a lot of challenges in terms of absorbing and monitoring in these container environments. So here is a quick refresher on what AWS is offering in the in terms of containers. We have a, a range of various uh, various different choices. One of the most common questions customer asking us is that, hey, help us decide which container service uh, we should use, and that's a fair question. And we often recommend customers working backwards from your application requirements and operation preference. So do you want a self-managed or do you want a fully managed services? And these are a good question to ask yourself when you're choosing the right containers to use. So although this is not a, a session to deep dive in the container options, we have tons of other uh, videos out there that you can watch if you want to deep dive into various different container options. But here at a very high level, as a refresher, that we have fully managed container services, which is our EKS and ECS. And both of those services that provide a rate of compute options and also have deep integrations with other AWS services. It does provide the global scales and reliabilities when you come to expect. We also have two hosted options, one which is EC2 type, where you can manage underlying instances on which your container is running. Or you can choose run your app, um, containers in a serverless manner with AWS Fargate. And then last but not least, we also have the container registry that's a fully managed container registry offering the high performance of hosting and you can rely, uh, reliably deploy application images and artifacts anywhere. So that's a quick um, refresh and high level overview on the container, what we offer. Now let's take a look at what we offer in absorbability. Amazon CloudWatch is our Amazon uh, AWS monitoring solution that integrates with over 120 AWS services and really provide you with that single source of choose in your absorbability and integrate it with all these other AWS services really available for you. AWS um, Amazon CloudWatch collects monitor and operation data in terms in forms of logs, metrics, and trace, and provide you that unified view of operation health, and then complete visibilities into across multiple AWS resources applications runs on AWS or on-prem. Some of the feedbacks that we hear from customers why they love using Amazon CloudWatch. Simplicity because they're already building workloads applications on AWS, it's really out of the box absorbability with a lot of preset um, dashboards and capabilities already available for customers. So with a minimum effort, customer can up and get their monitoring and absorbability running on their AWS workloads and applications. Centralized absorbability. They can now go to one single place that really see their operational health, application performance, and all in the one single place. And also end to end, because of these tightly integrated with 120 AWS services, now we can provide these different correlations between services that really provide you that end to end visibility into the environment.
We also understand that there's a lot of folks out there are using open source. So we also have open source options with AWS managed um, uh, options. So we have, if folks are out using Prometheus out there, um, or using Grafana, and certainly these are our larger uh, community of uh, customers, and we also have these options for, um, um, for customers as well. And one of the frequent question we often get is why, why um, I'm already using Prometheus and Grafana, why do I need to use uh, AWS? Here are some of the reasons why AWS managed services provide that additional capabilities or features for our customers. First, foremost, security. Um, we offer a secure way of integrated with AWS Identity Access Manager for authentications and authorizations to ensure all your data is encrypted in transit and at rest. Security is certainly a very big reason why customers are looking for AWS managed versus a self-managed open source. Also, AWS managed um, Prometheus and Grafana also be able to help production workloads. So in the way that we manage the, the underlying infrastructure that helps you eliminating over provisioning or under provisioning and be able to optimize it as your production workload grows or scales. We also provide high availability across multiple availability zones and for our managed um, services. Then the integrations, we have several integrations with AWS services that including the builder tools, cloud formations, CDKs, cloud trails for auditing. And last but not least is our contributing back to the open source communities and we collaborate with special interest groups to represent the voice of our customers. So we always are in these open source community to understand what is our customers looking for to making sure we have the capabilities that support the customer needs. So that is what we have in AWS Absorbability and Monitoring. Now I'm going to transition to a room to talk specifically around container environments or what are some latest features and capabilities to help you gain more visibilities in the container environment. All right, Arun, take it away. Thank you, Lucy, for such, such a great introduction. You're always amazing. Now let's quickly go through some timelines. In year 2019, AWS introduced Container Insights, a fully managed native observability service for containers. As you already know, it's reliable, it's secure, and it has built-in analytical capabilities. Year 2020, we introduced Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. It's a serverless Prometheus compatible monitoring service to securely monitor your container environments at scale. Again, it's fully managed, it's secure, it's highly available. What else do you need? And then 2023 invent two brand new features or products with enhanced container insights. It provides additional telemetry from Kubernetes control plane components. It also gives you cube state metrics and a lot more real time state and quickly a, raw, a lot more real time troubleshooting capabilities. And then we also introduced CloudWatch application signals and that is a game changer. In one sentence, CloudWatch application signals automatically collects the golden metrics. Again, what are those golden metrics? Availability, volume of requests, latency, and faults and errors. All the four golden metrics from your applications, enabling you to quickly see the operational health without writing any custom code. And guess what? You don't even have to create dashboards for that. Now let's dive deep into some of the aspects of Amazon CloudWatch application signals. First and foremost, it gives you pre-built 
dashboards. Now, these dashboards are optimized to present the most important operation data all in one place. And all of this without any manual effort. Then comes the golden metrics, the all four of them. Availability, volume of requests, latency and faults and errors. All of them are automatically discovered out of the box for every service, for every operation, and for every dependency of your application. And that is really cool. And then comes service level objectives, also known as SLOs. Now, today, the business gauges the happiness of their customers, not by measuring the CPU or the memory of their infrastructure, but by measuring the service level objectives that are promised to the customers. And with application signals, you now have a native way to monitor and report on SLOs all in CloudWatch. And lastly, but the most important factor is the ability to troubleshoot faster. Because of all of these things coming together, Amazon CloudWatch application signals gives you the ability to arrive at the root cause of an incident pretty fast in just a few clicks. Now, let's dive deep into a day in the life of Bob. Bob is a seasoned professional. He's an application owner and very thorough in everything that he does. As you can rightly see, he owns this retail store where you could buy all of these luxury watches. He also owns this pet clinic, which is a high volume traffic application. It's a Friday afternoon and Bob is in a hurry to get out of the office because his friends are waiting for him to join at the top golf for an evening fun of drinks, some fun, some golf and a lot of food. So Bob wrapped up from his office and he was logging off and he was on his way to go to top golf at that very moment. A new DevOps team member messaged him in the Slack. He said that he's finding it difficult to monitor all the clusters that he manages in one single place. And someone told him that Bob is the right person to help. Bob was in a hurry, but Bob being the Bob, he wanted to help. What did Bob do? Bob logged into AWS Management Console, and he went to the CloudWatch. There in the CloudWatch, he clicked on Container Insights and opened up the Container Insights landing page. Here, Bob explained this new resource on the features that Container Insights brings to the table. First and foremost, all the clusters that you have will be listed in the landing page. You would see the health of the clusters based upon the color. Red means there is some alarm which is triggered. Green means everything is good, hungry dory. Now this person asked, Bob, I understand the red and the green. What's the deal with the dark blue and the light blue? Bob explained, the dark blue, the clusters are operating at a high utilization. And you might want to monitor them closely. The light blue, the clusters are operating at normal utilization. Then this person asked, hey Bob, tell me, this one is red, probably something bad, but why blue? Why not red? Then Bob explained, well, AWS is doing something really cool here. AWS best practice alarms using the threshold information collected from hundreds of thousands of clusters gives a high level overview of what's happening in your cluster even when you have not configured any manual alarms. Oh, wow, that is cool. Can you click on that blue one, Bob? Bob clicked on the blue one and immediately the person was able to understand that the blue cluster might need a closer look though it has no manual alarms in it because it has a 90% memory utilization. In the case of lighter blue, probably there is no problem at all based upon the AWS best practice alarms. 
Bob also explained that you could get the control plane uh, summary in the landing page and scroll down. You will be able to see the top nodes based upon the CPU utilization and memory utilization and scroll down. You will be able to see all the clusters and its health. Then this person asked, Bob, this is red. Why is it red? Then Bob explained, well, Container Insights provides a rich set of metrics, over 50 metrics, to help you understand your Amazon EKS health and performance. And guess what? You can convert any of them into an alarm. Now let's click on this one. And as you can see, there are 18 alarms configured, out of which two are triggered. That's why it says two out of 18. Now, if you click on cluster, it takes you to the two alarms that are actually triggered. As you can rightly see, there is an alarm, which is CPU utilization over part limit. So this person asks, what is this alarm? What is the CPU utilization over part limit? Bob answered, well, it is the part CPU usage total divided by the part CPU limit. And every time when the part CPU limit is coming closer to the specified limit, this alarm will trigger. Then Bob also explained there are over 50 metrics and corresponding widgets in the page itself for you so that you can dive deep into the health of your clusters. Bob also said, well, if you're using distributed GPU, then Container Insights provides you enhanced GPU metrics. Now, let me take you to enhanced GPU metrics I have it set up in a different region. And what does that mean? Container Insights is available in several regions. Now, let me take you to a different region to dive deep into the enhanced GPU metrics as well. So, as you can rightly see, I'm in a different region and there the clusters are all okay 16 alarms green and if you scroll down you will be able to see pod gpu utilization memory utilization memory used by total power draw and even the pod gpu temperature isn't that amazing this new devops team member was very happy with what bob was able to walk him through bob was happy that he was able to help he signed off from his laptop and he headed or rather he was on his way to get to top golf because he wanted to join his friends for an evening full of fun some drinks and some golf at that exact moment bob received a message from his dog team stating that multiple customers are reporting latency in the pet clinic application which is an application that he owns Bob immediately knew that that is not a good sign. Why so? Because it affects the revenue of his company because people need to register to Pet Clinic and that is the revenue stream for the company. What did Bob do? Bob again went back to Container Insights. And this time he wanted to identify why his web service application is slow. He clicked on the red one and he went to the clusters. And there in the cluster, he scrolled all the way down to the bottom and then he clicked on the application signals. There in the application signals, he was able to see all the services. Again, these services are automatically discovered by application signals for you. And then in application signals, he was able to immediately see that there is something wrong and SLI is unhealthy and there is a latency issue. What did Bob do? Bob clicked on that service and opened up a tab. As you can rightly see, it took from container insights to application signals. And here you could get all the four golden metrics the volume of total requests, the availability, the latency, and the faults and errors, all of them automatically discovered and dashboarded for you. 
So Bob was going through the volume of the request and availability. The availability is 100 percentage. The volume of request is pretty steady, not a big deal. He looked at faults and errors. There is nothing wrong there. And then he could see that the latency, especially the P99, and of course the P90 and 50, they are all on the higher side. And what did Bob do? Bob clicked on a point in time for a P90 latency. And as you can rightly see, application signals now narrowed down and provided you with the traces for that specific point in time. And there are a lot of requests, the trace IDs that were captured. Uh, and what did Bob do? Bob clicked on one of the traces. Here you can see that the requests are coming in from the client all the way back to some S3 and some DB. But there is some red that is happening. What did Bob do? Bob clicked on the web service that was having latency. Bob scrolled down and Bob could immediately see that the front end was having about 20 seconds, but the back end, the web service, was pretty much taking the entire time. What did Bob do? Bob said to the NOC team member that the calls made to this, the get request made to this IP address at port 8083, you got to check it. Why is it making that call? Why is it slow? You might want to go and check that IP address and the port and then dive a little deep. Bob also mentioned that, check out this. There is an S3 call that is being made. It's a 200 OK, but it is doing a list buckets, which is not a good measure, which is not a good operation. You should go to the respective S3 bucket and the respective S3 object. If you are having hundreds of thousands of buckets, a list bucket may take forever to return a, a, a response. So you might also want to make a change to the code in such a way that it is going to that particular object. Bob was happy that he was able to show how application signals can give uh, a, a, an easy way to troubleshoot a problem. But Bob wanted to show off a little bit more. Bob went to application signals and clicked on the service map. And then Bob explained him that this is the way to get a unified single pane of glass visibility for your application because application signals discovers this service map for you and then constantly updates it as your application changes. This was a big information for the NOC uh, team member. He was happy. And Bob was also happy that he was able to help. Bob was about to sign off from his laptop so that he could head to the top golf to join his friends for an evening full of fun, some drinks, and some golf. At that exact moment, a developer, an application developer, reached out to Bob. She is new to the team. She deployed some applications, right? And she wanted to troubleshoot because she assumed that there is a performance issue and she didn't know what to do. Someone pointed her that Bob is the right person to help. She called Bob and said, hey Bob, I want to check some performance logs for the pet clinic application. I don't know which log to search for and I don't know how to do it. Please help me. Now what did Bob do? Bob being Bob really wanted to help. Bob immediately went to container insights. And this time he clicked on the red one, which is bad, and then he went to the container straight away. As you can see, now the dashboard is focused on containers, the container summary, the memory utilization, uh, the pods if there are any waiting, so on and so forth. The request from the application developer was, I want to troubleshoot the performance logs for the, the cluster. What did Bob do? Bob scrolled all the way down and he selected that particular container and under actions, he clicked on view performance logs. Right now, AWS will AWS container insights will take you from container insights all the way to Amazon CloudWatch logs insights. As you can see at the landing page, you will be able to see that.
the particular log is pre-selected and then there is a query pre-selected for you. All you have to do is click on run query and it's going to fetch the data for the time frame, which was also pre-selected for you. Bob knew that in 2023 reInvent, AWS, or rather Amazon CloudWatch team, released a lot of new features, specifically around the generative AI capability from CloudWatch. And Bob simply wanted to show a couple of tricks to this developer. What did Bob do? Bob took away the query, and then in the query generator, he typed something. And then what did he do? He clicked on generate new query. As you can see, a prompt, a natural language prompt created a query. All you have to do is now run query and it is going to get a query to get the cluster name, Kubernetes host, and all the instance IDs. As you can rightly see, it is getting populated. And you could also do some complex, really complex query generation using this feature. What did Bob do? Bob took away the Nexus to query and type something and then again clicked on generate new query. This time it generated a much more complex query. All you have to do is run query and it is going to actually come up with the data that we requested. In this case, all the nodes arranged with average CPU in a descending order. All you have to do is prompt it with a natural language. And it supports, uh, you know, very simple queries to complex queries, as you can rightly see. You could also come here and export it as uh, Excel or CSV or JSON so that you could store it and probably use it for other functions. And you could do all of this from a, a, from a API perspective as well. Bob was able to help and Bob was happy that he was able to help but he still wanted to show uh, some of the more advanced features that Amazon CloudWatch delivers for us today. Bob went to the log groups and showed this person that if you choose to create a new log group, today Amazon CloudWatch gives you the ability to have a standard log class as well as an infrequent access log cap log class, which gives you uh, a benefit from a cost perspective. So essentially enabling you to save some cost, but obviously there might be some feature trade-offs, but it is up to you to save cost uh, using infrequent access or using standard. Bob also showed that you could actually have log anomalies all detected by uh, Amazon CloudWatch automatically for you essentially finding anomalous behavior on the ingested log events in a log group automatically for you. Bob also showed that there is a feature called Lifetail. All you have to do is select a particular log group. And if you are familiar with the Unix command tail minus F, Amazon CloudWatch Lifetail is exactly that. It tails a log group as life can it be all you have to do is you can click a start and it's going to tail that log you could add filter patterns for example you can search for a root in the log group or search for lucy in the log group and if it happens it's going to show only that all you have to do is select the log group and click start and as soon as you click start it's going to it's going to do a tail minus f essentially on that particular log group and then you can dive deep into all the different aspects of the log. Bob was happy that he was not only able to help, but also show a lot of additional features that CloudWatch brings to the table. Bob was about to sign off from his laptop so that he could head to Top Golf to join his friends for an evening full of fun, some drinks, and some golf. As he was able to, as he was, you know, getting ready to get out, Bob's manager came to the desk. Looking at the grumpy face of his manager, Bob could sense that something was not right.
His manager straight away told Bob, Bob, we are in trouble. It's time to renew the license of that third party monitoring tool that we got two years ago. They have a new licensing model and it's going to cost us an arm and a leg. And also, they said that they could give us 5% discount if we sign up for a three year extended contract. Bob, we really don't want to spend any more money on this. And obviously, we don't want to do this three year contract. Do you know if AWS has an option for a centralized monitoring solution? And also, that would allow us to monitor our containers and probably much more. Bob had a broad smile on his face. Bob immediately said, yes, there is something called AWS native cross account observability solution. Let me take my presentation and walk you through that. And Bob switched to presentation mode. Bob explained to his manager, cross account observability in CloudWatch lets you monitor and troubleshoot applications that span across multiple accounts within a region using cross account observability. And again, what does that mean? Bob explained that consider you are having multiple accounts. Say for example, account A, B, C, all the way up to N. What you can do is you can have your logs, metrics, traces, container observability, application insights, and a lot more into one single observability account. Essentially, giving you a bird's eye view across multiple accounts, giving you reduced mean time to resolution. And Bob also said that this is so easy to set up. It's few clicks, you will be able to set it up. As well, you could do this infrastructure as code. So as new accounts are vended using your uh, you know, account vending mechanism, you could make that new AWS account, let's call it N plus one, make it available, logs, metrics, traces, container insights, application insights, and much more into that central observability account. Bob's manager asked this very vital question. Bob, seems like this is what we want. Finally, we can get away from that third party tool, but give me the truth. How much does this cost? Bob smiled and said, well, this new feature comes with no additional cost for customers. This cross account observability with CloudWatch is no additional cost as of today. And again, this is within a region today. It is not cross region, it's within a region, but it could be across multiple regions because AWS always listens to its customers. But for now, it's a cross, cross account observability, no additional cost, giving you the seamless cross account visibility into your logs, metrics, traces, container insights, and much more. Bob's manager asked, this is cool. Can you show me the experience from a console perspective? Bob said, why not? Let me show you that. This time, Bob pulled in his setup demo setup and he went to the CloudWatch. There in CloudWatch, he clicked on Container Insights. There in Container Insights, Bob showed that there are three clusters here, but as you can rightly see, this one is called as Monitoring Account all the way at the top right corner. And if you scroll down, you can see that there are clusters are the same name, but you could see that this one is getting reported from one account called microservices A, another from microservices B, and another from microservices A. And you could actually dive deep into each of these clusters and troubleshoot all from the single monitoring account. You also have an option to troubleshoot a lot more. For example, if you go to logs groups, you could actually see that this log group is reported is reporting from the account level monitoring account, which is this account. But if you scroll down, you will see that another log group is getting reported from microservices A, which is a totally different account. And again, scroll down, you will see another one, which is another account, so on and so forth. 
you could do logging sites and uh, so on and so forth several other cloudwatch features also because this facility of cross account observability today brings you the seamless data access and navigation capability across logs metrics traces and much more bob's manager was super happy with what bob was able to tell him and at the end of the day bob's manager was able to get rid of that third party licensing contract and then move to this cross account observability from amazon cloudwatch bob had an awesome smile on his face because he was able to do a lot of things that day and bob was happy because he was getting ready to join his friends at top call on his way to uh you know his friends you could see that bob was able to you know do a lot of things that day he was able to uh, explain the container insights experience to a new team member he was able to troubleshoot a real world problem a latency problem in few clicks typically in large enterprises or rather large or small it doesn't matter it takes hours and a, a, a dozen people to troubleshoot a latency issue here Bob was able to do all of that by himself he was able to showcase the latest generative ai capabilities of cloudwatch to a new team member and Bob was also able to explain his manager about cloud native cross account observability, enabling him to save a ton of money that he was spending on some third party contracts. Now, would you like to help yourself and your customers the same way? That's the biggest question. But believe me, we have got you covered. As you can see, these are some of the resources that we want to offer you. The first one is the observability workshop. As you can see, it's a workshop. It's a hands on workshop. It's free of cost for you. If AWS hosts that workshop, please contact your account team and they should be able to set that up for you. And how does that workshop look like? That workshop looks like this. It is again a free of cost workshop for you. If AWS hosts that for you. Here, you will have native observability across logs, metrics, so on and so forth. And under insights, under container insights, you will be able to get a hands-on of everything that we talked today. And under managed open source observability, as Lucy was talking about, a managed open source uh, Prometheus service and a Grafana service. And of course, the AWS distro for open telemetry, which is a collector which can send data to uh, multiple monitoring tools. All of it's for you. And also, if you go to use cases, there is a particular use case for application signals. Again, you will be able to do hands-on on all of this. We are contributors to this, and we continuously build on this. Now, the next one is the observability best practices. This is prescriptive guidance and recommendations with implementation examples. And how does it look? It looks like this. This is also built by, you know, contributors within AWS. This is publicly accessible. This has got a bunch of guides. This is cloud agnostic, but you will be able to get hybrid and multi-cloud and a lot of uh, information about how to build uh, an amazing observability. We also have observability maturity model here so that you could dive deep and figure out where do you stand in the observability maturity model. You know, where do you stand? Stage one, two, three, or four. Now, if you are a Terraform shop or a CDK shop, go and check this. This is observability accelerator for Terraform and CDK. Essentially a bunch of modules to help you configure observability. And we also have skills builder here for you. Essentially you can enroll into this digital training course, which contains presentations, architectural diagrams, service demonstrations, and a lot of other resources links so that you could expand your knowledge base. And also there is an EKS workshop for you. Now, as we wrap up, you know that observability is the foundational element for establishing a reliable service, but it does not happen overnight. 
patience is virtue and there is no secret sauce here. And there is no compression algorithm for experience. What that matters is you and your experience. And if you would like to connect with us, our LinkedIn handle is here. Please reach out if you have any questions. And that's a wrap from my end. Back to you, Lucy. Thank you, Arum, for a great demo. And Bob certainly know a lot of capabilities in CloudWatch, and he's able to show that impress his coworkers and his manager. I think Bob deserve a promotion. And thanks again, everybody, for your time to joining us and learn about the latest capabilities. We hope this is valuable for you, and you can that take to your day to day life to improve your work and troubleshoot and find the root cause of the issue. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.